Hey buddies, Moose Plug here, coming at you with another Borderlands 3 video. Today we're going to be covering a new flak build that I tried out that's absolutely crazy. So like many Peregrine builds, we're of course using Rack Attack. This build specializes in dealing tons and tons of melee damage by using the Peregrine class mod and the Fish Slap Grenade in combination with multiple melee damage bonuses from our Cycle Stabber and Face Puncher. This build is very face roll, it's honestly one of my favorite builds I've tried out recently. It's very fluent, it feels really really nice to play, it's when you get in the groove you're just able to one shot like literally everything. Everything. Let's do a brief run by and basically how this build works. Generally for bossing you want to be equipping the Psycho Stabber and just throwing out a Rack Attack. Once you throw out that Rack Attack it throws out a Fish Slap which will spawn two Fish Slaps at once because we're using a Jumping Fish Slap for double the melee damage. And then we use in conjunction the White Elephant to occasionally attach a Sticky Bomb which scales off the damage that was dealt with melee damage and take a bunch of bonuses we have from our damage multipliers to just basically one shot anything you want. I was able to one shot Captain Trant with one rack attack. It's absolutely crazy. And when you're not bossing, you want to be, of course, using the face puncher since we have lots of abilities that increases our melee damage. AE Groundbreaker, which is a guardian point, allows us to just deal millions and millions of damage really, really easily. At one point, we even dealt 1 billion damage, which is absolutely bonkers. Of course, this build wouldn't be possible unless we were using Peregrine. Now, the Peregrine class mod, of course, spawns a grenade every single time we hit an enemy with rack attack. We are using these particular prefixes for or increase splash damage grenade damage and melee damage. Grenade and melee are obvious, increases flish slaps damage. Splash damage increases the damage on rack attack, so that's very, very helpful. And the sticky bombs from white elephants, so that's very, very crucial. Now we're using a knife drain white elephant because we never have to worry about ammo, so of course you could run a cut purse, but there's no point in running a cut purse if you never run an ammo. Since we're not doing that, we just use a knife drain. It keeps us healthy at all times. Never die with this build because of knife drain. Since Borderlands has health gating, we're able to be invulnerable every single time we go below, I think, believe it's 25% health and which allows us to give us chances to activate our knife drain to get our health back instantly. And since we're dealing minutes of damage, one shot of the face puncher or one white elephant bomb stores our health instantly like that. It's awesome. Now the prefix we're using is grenade damage, melee damage of course, and then the area effect damage which is, you know, splash damage. I mean there's a little difference but I won't get into it. Now for those of you who don't know, this is the fish slap. It's the only grenade in the game that is able to deal melee damage. We're using on action skill and 50% bonus shock damage it doesn't matter what annoyment you have as long as you're using an annoyment that would increase its damage we could run the annoyment while action skill active increase grenade damage but i've heard rumors that that doesn't actually affect fish slap there's inconclusive evidence or something i have a friend that says it does some posts that say it doesn't there's some evidence that says it does it seems like there needs to be some clarification in the community if you guys want to post your opinion on that say it down below but i didn't want to risk it so we're just using action skill n to increase damage no matter what we're also using a rough and tumble old god 50 percent incendiary damage on action skill n we're using an old god because it increases our elemental damage and since rack attacks deal fire damage at least the ones we're using that increases damage they deal of course you could run a frozen heart with action skill star activate shield deplete which would cause all the enemies around you to be frozen if you want utility i would definitely go for a frozen heart but i kind of want to go all in on damage of course a frozen heart would increase our damage by three times if the enemy is frozen this is another option as well if you want to go for the frozen heart it's very very fun if you use the frozen heart but i wanted to try a build without using the frozen heart because i just recently used frozen heart for another build main weapon we said as earlier was bossing this weapon got a buff i think two or a month back that increased melee damage from 100 something to 340 which a allows us to do one shot lots of bosses on action skill and melee damage is increased by 100%. That's just two times multiplier to our melee damage. Very, very useful. Should always use that on a melee build. And we're using the face puncher for our general mobbing needs. Action skill and melee damage is increased by 100% as well. Basically allows us to just one shot pretty much everything with this guy. It's awesome. I spent a long time on circle slaughters and every enemy I came across I was able to one shot or if they were a badass I was able to two shot, three shot. The Penny on how much damage we were getting from the Groundbreaker. If we have optimal Groundbreaker, badasses would be killed in one shot. You know, we're constantly throwing out our rack attacks, so we're getting bonuses from Groundbreaker all the time. And then White Elephant also puts bonuses into the Groundbreaker all the time as well. Now, for those of you who don't know what Groundbreaker is, Groundbreaker is a Guardian rank all the way at the end of an Enforcer tree. Right here, deals 25% of damage that you haven't dealt from melee over the last five seconds. So just basically constant bonus damage to your melee if you're using the white elephant. You can mix and match a lot of items in this build if you want to increase your melee damage a little bit more, your utility, but I found this to deal the most amount of damage baseline at all times. Rack attacks able to deal millions of damage, your melee deal millions of damage, your white elephant of course scales off your melee damage, so 
you know, <laughs> millions of damage, even one billion at one time. Constantly throwing out racks that constantly throw out grenades, and those singularity pull enemies in. It's just a lot of fun with this build, and since Flak has abilities that lets him run faster as he kills enemies, you're able to run around the map and just one-tap everything around you. It's really, really fun. Really, really fluent and fun build. I highly recommend for anybody. It's really, really awesome. Mayhem modifiers we're using is Big Kick Energy, Healing, Avenger, Chain Gang, and Postmortems. Basic, you know, modifiers you could use on any build. Of course, you could use some modifiers to increase your melee damage a little bit, but I found this to just be a general decent modifier to use for any build. There's a fun Mayhem modifier called Slayer that allows us to basically kill any enemy instantly if they're below 50% health on shields, armor, or health. That's a very fun Mayhem modifier to use, but I always found glitches when using that mayhem modifier so i steer clear away from that particular mayhem modifier but if you want to you could always go for that now the face puncher is able to trigger that slayer ability so you're able to activate that from a long range so if you want to go for the slayer mo modifier that's a good thing to remember and of course if you want you could run this build on mayhem 11 because then you wouldn't have to worry about modifiers but i like modifiers i don't know it allows me to increase my damage more and more and more of course we're using a spider ant scorcher to increase our elemental damage now white elephant does ram random element and sometimes kinetic elements as well. Of course, we're also using Megavore, which allows our face puncher to crit. And I think I found that the fish slap crit every once in a while as well. To optimize the most out of rack attack, we of course use as many points as the head count we can, which decreases the cooldown on our action skill every time we score a critical hit. And since we have Megavore, our face puncher deals constant crits. Very, very easy to get your rack attacks back. I don't think I found a time when I never had rack attacks. And then of course, we're using eager to impress every time we kill an enemy. Our action skill cooldown is also reduced. Once again, another reason why we never have a rack attack ever gone. It's absolutely incredible. Now, the best action skill anointments for rack attack I personally find is flock and load and rack celebrate. For those you don't know, Peregrine deals more damage based on how many racks you summon. If you summon only two, you get a two times multiplier. If you summon four, you get a four times multiplier. Don't ask me why that is. It's just how Peregrine class mod works. So you always want to use flock and load if you're using a Peregrine base build. This will increase your damage by four times as opposed to two times times and it's very beneficial to always have that and of course we're using rack celebrate which increases our action skill charges and before with peregrine builds we even sometimes have to switch to rack open a cold one to change rack to cryo damage to allow peregrine to activate on fire immune enemy but because they patched it you no longer have to worry about that so you can just keep the same element of rack attack is normally aka fire and you can always have your flock and load and rack celebrate at all times so you never have to worry about switching off those which is awesome that they patched that and I said before, this build is very, very face roll. Whenever you're mobbing, just keep out your face puncher. Just shoot any enemy you want. It's very, very brain dead play style. You just shoot whatever's on screen. You don't have to do a lot of thinking. Just throw out grenades whenever you feel like it. Do rack attacks whenever you feel like it. You could technically just never throw out a rack attack and still do a lot of damage, but you want to optimize your damage at all times. So try to keep those rack attacks out and try to keep those grenades out because the singularities really do help for killing the occasional enemies. And they spout some ricochet weird areas with the fish slap. So since those are bouncing everywhere, you'll occasionally get random kills as you're running around. For those of you wondering, here's my build. It primarily optimizing crit damage and action skill cooldown rate. Key abilities are Planetary Stalker, Head Count, Megavore on the red tree. Key points on the green tree is Eager to Impress and Lick the Wounds because you never know if you're going to get down accidentally. Of course, you're able to one-shot most enemies, so you don't really need this. But it's always nice to have more Hunter skills, the better. So that's another key point. And we don't put any points in the blue or purple of course we could put points in there but i find the deal the most amount of damage by just optimizing as many points as we can in the red and green tree for this particular build and as i said before spider ant scorcher increases our elemental damage by 10 percent, so that's the go-to pet for this build to increase your damage at all times very easy build to run by you don't have to think too much on the other skill trees just the red and green here's the guardian ranks here's our mayhem modifiers if you guys are a fan of peregrine builds we have a peregrine plus light speed grenade that actually spawns the grenade four times instantly it's absolutely bonkers i was able to solo the entirety of the guardian and malawan takedown without firing a single bullet with that build absolutely awesome i would re definitely recommend that one if you guys want to try something different why not try our cold war plus crossbow build with zane it optimizes in crit damage and we're able to deal 1.5 times billion damage on brave war this build very very easy you basically face 
one shot anything you want but it's very skill shot reliant so if you're not able to do that maybe that's not your build if you want something that's a lot easier light show plus flare build for most this most build optimizes iron bear and on foot Mo's for a 50 50 combo you're able to deal millions of damage in iron bear and out of iron bear so you're able to pilot and be on foot and still kill anything you want with that build if you want to try a unorthodox build we have a face puncher plus hustler zane build this build allows you to instant freeze everything by putting tons of points into brain freeze to allow you to just freeze anything you want very very easily and then we use switch to the face puncher for three times melee damage and want to try something new out we have the iron cub bear that allows you to deal millions of damage iron cubs able to deal millions of damage with damage multipliers from flare you get tons of bonus damage from flare because iron cub does a great job of keeping his feel up and the rail guns he shoots is just able to one shot tons of enemies it's awesome and it arcs to random enemies just kills tons of enemies that you're not expecting to kill it's really really fun i definitely recommend that one be a save file down below for this particular build if you're interested in the comment and description all right that's all i have for today i hope you guys like comment subscribe and i hope y'all have a great day <laughs> Bye bye and the last shall be first to immerse in a pass out heat facing him up with a moxie melted he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell war in a cave with a torch on a wall then a window arrangement of porcelain dolls